Good morning. Welcome back to Open Med School. The last session we have discussed about the alpha blockers. Today I will be discussing about beta blockers. Today's agenda is what is the action of or what is the effect of beta blocker in various organs. The mechanism of action will be discussed later. So let us take one by one. So the beta blockers are present throughout the cell. Almost all the cells contains and blockage of beta receptor will lead on to reduction in the level of cyclic AMP and this is needed for the 3 sodium 2 potassium pump which pushes potassium inside and the sodium outside. So when the sodium potassium pump is inhibited, this will lead on to increase in the level of potassium. So hyperkalemia can occur with beta blockage or this can be used clinically in cases when there is a patient has got hyperkalemia, a beta stimulation can be given to produce or reduce the potassium level. Take keep this point in mind. Next, we will think about the action of on the eyes. So, in the eyes, the ciliary bodies contains the beta block, beta receptors, and blockage of ciliary bodies or the beta receptors in the eyes will lead on to reduction in the production of intraocular fluid that is the aqueous humor. So, in the eyes, it will try help to decrease the intraocular pressure. So, beta blockers can be used for glaucoma where the intraocular pressure is high. So, this is the second thing you should remember regarding the effect of beta blocker. Then the beta block receptors are present especially the beta 2 receptors are present in the lungs. So just remember beta 2 is present in the lungs. We have got two lungs so remember beta 2. And stimulation of beta receptors leads to bronchodilation. So inhibition of or blockage of beta receptor leads on to bronchospasm. So beta stimulation is used for bronchospasm. Beta blockers can exacerbate. Then beta receptors are present in the liver, especially the beta 2. So beta 2 receptor blockage, we take about the liver. Beta stimulation increases the level of glucose. So gluconeogenesis occurs due to beta stimulation. Same way in the pancreas. Pancreas contains the beta 2 receptors. Stimulation will lead on to release of insulin. So beta receptor blockage can reduce the glucose level. This is especially important in case of diabetic patients. So diabetic patients on beta blockade, the hepatic neoglucogenesis can be inhibited. Remember this point. Then beta 2 receptors are present in the central nervous system and also in the muscles. So stimulation of the beta receptor that is a beta 2 is responsible for tremor and anxiety. So in a patient with a diabetes, the blockage of beta receptor lead on to hypoglycemia unawareness. That is when there is hypoglycemia, you get sympathetic stimulation. So patients on beta blockers, when they develop hypoglycemia, develop hypoglycemia 
unawareness. Hope this is clear to you. Then remember the beta receptors. Part where we are talking is about the beta two receptors. Beta two receptors are present in the gut also. So beta blocker can produce increase in the bowel motility. So we have covered the effect of blockage of beta two receptors. Now we think about the beta one receptors. Beta one receptors are predominantly present in the heart. So it is a predominant in the heart, and heart and kidneys are interrelated. Mm. That is why you, last time we mentioned about the cardio renal. So it is the beta one receptor. We have only one heart. So beta one receptor stimulation leads on to increase in the heart rate and increase in the force of contraction. So it can be blockage will lead on to reduction in the heart rate and force of contraction. The beta two receptors are present in the gestalt glomerular apparatus. So release of renin. Is by the beta two, beta one stimulation. So beta blockers will lead on to reduction in the release of renin that leads on to decrease in the blood pressure or the aldosterone or renin angiotensin aldosterone stimulation or formation is blocked. Now we have got one more receptor, the beta three receptor. So we have discussed the beta one, beta two, and beta three. Beta-3 is mainly in the liquid for lipolysis. So, and also this, this can have some cardio inhibitory stimulation lead on to some cardio inhibitory properties also. So, basically, we divide the beta receptors into beta-1 and beta-2. And we have explained the major effects of the beta blockade. In the next session, we will discuss about the clinical use of beta blockers in various conditions. Hope this was useful to you. Thank you.